Befama Fraternitatis of the Meritorious Order of the Rosy Cross, addressed to the learned in general and the governors of Europe, published anonymously in 1614. This version comes from The Real History of the Rosicrucians by Arthur Edward Waite, published in 1887, narrated by Robert D. Jones. Introduction by Arthur Edward Waite The original edition of the Universal Reformation contained the manifesto bearing the above title, but which the notary, Hasselmeyer, declares to have existed in manuscript as early as the year 1610, as would also appear from the passage in the Castle edition of 1614, the earliest which I have been able to trace. It was reprinted with the Confessio Fraternitatis and the Allgemeine Reformation der Gansenwelt at Frankfurt on the Main in 1615. A Dutch translation was also published in this year, and by 1617 there had been four Frankfurt editions, the last omitting the Universal Reformation, which though it received an elaborate alchemical elucidation by Brotoffer, seems gradually to have dropped out of notice. Other editions, says Buell, followed in the years immediately succeeding, but these it is unnecessary to notice. In the title page of the third Frankfurt edition stands, first printed at Castle in the year 1616. But the four words apply to the original edition, the last four to this. Pharma Fraternitatis, or A Discovery of the Fraternity of the Most Laudable Order of the Rosy Cross. Seeing the only wise and merciful God in these latter days have poured out so richly his mercy and goodness to mankind, whereby we do attain more and more to the perfect knowledge of his Son, Jesus Christ, and of nature. But justly we may boast of the happy time wherein there is not only discovered unto us the half part of the world, which was heretofore unknown and hidden, but he have also made manifest unto us many wonderful and never heretofore seen works and creatures of nature, and moreover have raised men endued with great wisdom which might partly renew and reduce all arts in this our spotted and imperfect age to perfection, so that finally man might thereby understand his own nobleness and worth, why he is called microcosmos, and how far his knowledge extendeth in nature. Although the rude world herewith will be but little pleased, but rather smile and scoff thereat. Also, the pride and covetousness of the learned is so great, it will not suffer them to agree together. But where they united, they might, out of all those things which in this our age God doth so richly bestow on us, collect librum naturae, or a perfect method of all arts. But such is their opposition that they still keep and are loath to leave the old course esteeming Porphyry, Aristotle, and Galen. Yea, and that which have but a mere show of learning, more than the clear and manifested light and truth, those, if they were now living, with much joy, would leave their erroneous doctrines. But here is too great weakness for such great work. And although in theology, physic, and the mathematic, the truth doth oppose it itself. Nevertheless, the old enemy, by his subtlety and craft, doth show himself in hindering every good purpose by his instruments and contentious wavering people. To such an intention of a general reformation, the most godly and highly illuminated father, our brother CRC, a German, the chief and original of our fraternity, have much and long time laboured, who, by reason of his poverty, although descended of noble parents, in the fifth year of his age was placed in a cloister where he had learned indifferently the Greek and Latin tongues, and upon his earnest desire and request, being yet in his growing years, was associated to a brother, P.A.L., who had determined to go to the Holy Land. Although his brothers died in Cyprus, and so never came to Jerusalem, 
Yet our brother Siasi did not return, but shipped himself over and went to Damascus, minding from thence to go to Jerusalem. But by reason of the feebleness of his body, he remained still there. And by his skill in physic, he obtained much favour with the Turks. In the meantime, he became acquainted with the wise men of Demkar in Arabia, and beheld what great wonders they wrought, and how nature was discovered unto them. Hereby was that high and noble spirit of brother Siasi, so stirred up that Jerusalem was not so much now in his mind as Damascus. Also, he could not bridle his desires any longer, but made a bargain with the Arabians that they should carry him for a certain sum of money to Damkar. He was but of the age of sixteen years when he came thither, yet of a strong Dutch constitution. There the wise men received him not as a stranger, as he himself witnessed, but as one whom they had long expected. They called him by his name and showed him other secrets out of his cloister, whereat he could not but mightily wonder. He learned there better the Arabian tongue, so that the year following he translated the book M into good Latin, which he afterwards brought with him. This in the place where he did learn his physic and his mathematics, whereof the world have much cause to rejoice if there were more love and less envy. After three years, he returned again with good consent, shipped himself over to Sinus Arabicus into Egypt, where he remained not long but only took better notice there of the plants and creatures. He sailed over the whole Mediterranean Sea, for to come unto Fez, where the Arabians had directed him. It is a great shame unto us that wise men, so far remote the one from the other, should not only be of one opinion, hating all contentious writings, but also be so willing and ready, under the seal of secrecy, to impart their secrets to others. Every year, the Arabians and Africans do send one to another, inquiring one of another out of their arts. If happily they had found out some better things, or if experience and weakened their reason. Yearly, there came something to light, whereby the mathematics, physic, and magic, for in those are they of Fez most skilful, were amended. There is nowadays no want of learned men in Germany, magicians, Kabbalists, physicians, and philosophers, were there but more love and kindness among them, or that the most part of them would not keep their secrets close only to themselves. At Fez, he did get acquainted with those which are commonly called the elementary inhabitants, who revealed unto him many of their secrets, as we Germans, likewise, might gather together many things if there were the like unity and desire of searching out secrets amongst us. Of these of Fez, he often did confess that their Magia was not altogether pure, and also that their Kabbalah was defiled with their religion. But notwithstanding, he knew how to make good use of the same, and found still more better grounds for his faith altogether agreeable with the harmony of the whole world, and wonderfully impressed in all periods of time. Thence proceedeth that fair concord, that as in every several kernel is contained a whole good tree of fruit. So likewise is included in the little body of man, the whole great world, whose religion, policy, health, members, nature, language, words and works are agreeing, sympathising, and in equal tune and melody with God, heaven, and earth. And that which is disagreeing with them is error, falsehood, and of the devil, who alone is the first, middle, and last cause of strife, blindness, and darkness in the world. Also, might one examine all and several persons upon the earth, he should find that which is good and right is always agreeing with itself, but all the rest is spotted, with a thousand erroneous conceits. After two years, Brother R.C. departed the city of Fez and sailed with many costly things into Spain, 
Hoping well, as he himself had so well and profitably spent his time in his travels, that the learned in Europe would highly rejoice with him and begin to rule and order all their studies according to those sure and sound foundations. He therefore conferred with the learned in Spain, showing unto them the errors of our arts and how they might be corrected, and from whence they should gather the true inditia of the times to come and wherein they ought to agree that those things that are past. Also, how the faults of the church and the whole philosophia moralis were to be amended. He showed them new growths, new fruits, and beasts, which did concord with old philosophy, and prescribed them new axiomata, whereby all things might fully be restored. But it was to them a laughing matter, and being a new thing unto them, they feared that their great name would be lessened if they should now again begin to learn and acknowledge their many years' errors, to which they were accustomed, and wherewith they had gained them enough. Whoso loveth unquietness, let him be reformed, they said. The same song was also sung to him by other nations, for which moved him the more because it happened to him contrary to his expectation, being then ready bountifully to impart all his arts and secrets to the learned, if they would have but undertaken to write the true and infallible axiomata out of all faculties, sciences and arts, and whole nature as that which he knew would direct them, like a globe or circle, to the onely middle point and centrum. And as it is usual among the Arabians, it should only serve to the wise and learned for a rule, that also there might be a society in Europe which might have gold, silver, and precious stones sufficient for to bestow them on kings for their necessary uses and lawful purposes, with which society, such as be governors, might be brought up for to learn all that which God hath suffered man to know, and thereby to be enabled in all times of need to give their counsel unto those that seek it, like the heathen oracles. Verily, we must confess that the world in those days was already big with those great commotions, labouring to be delivered of them, and did bring forth painful, worthy men, who break with all force through darkness and barbarism, and left us who succeeded to follow them. Assuredly, they have been the uppermost point in Tragona Igneo. I, whose flame now should be more and more brighter, and shall undoubtedly give to the world the last light. Such a one, likewise, have Theophrastus been in vocation and callings, although he was none of our fraternity. Yet, nevertheless, have he diligently read over the book M, whereby, his sharp ingenium was exalted, but this man was also hindered in his course by the multitude of the learned and wise seeming men, that he was never able peaceably to confer with others of the knowledge and understanding he had of nature. And thereby, in his writings, he rather mocked these busybodies, and doth not show them altogether what he was. Yet, nevertheless, there is found with him well grounded the aforenamed harmonia, which without doubt he bad imparted to the learned, if he had not found them rather worthy of subtle vexation than to be instructed in greater arts and sciences. He thus with a free and careless life lost his time and left unto the world their foolish pleasures. But that we do not forget our loving father, brother C.R., he, after many painful travels and his fruitless true instructions, returned again into Germany, for which he heartily loved, by reason of the alterations which were shortly to come, and of the strange and dangerous contentions. There, although he could have bragged with his art, but specially of the transmutations of metals, yet he esteemed more heaven and men, the citizens thereof, than all vain glory and pomp. Nevertheless, he builded a fitting and neat habitation, in the which he ruminated his voyage and philosophy and reduced them together in a true memorial. In this house 
he spent a great time in the mathematics and made many fine instruments, ex omnibus hujus artis partibus, whereof there is but little remaining to us, as hereafter you shall understand. After five years came again into his mind the wished-for reformation, and in regard of it, he doubted of the aid and help of others, although he himself was painful, lusty, and unwearisome. Howsoever he undertook, with some few adjoined with him, to attempt the same, whereof he desired to that end to have out of his first cloister, to the which he bare a great affection, three of his brethren, brother G.V., brother I.A., and brother I.O., who had some mere knowledge of the arts than at that time many others had. He did find those three unto himself to be faithful, diligent, and secret, as also to commit carefully writing all that which he should direct and instruct them in, to the end that those which were to come and through a special revelation should be received into this fraternity might not be deceived of the least syllable and word. After this manner began the fraternity of the Rosy Cross, first by four persons only, and by them was made the magical language and writing, which a large dictionary, which we yet daily use to God's praise and glory, and do find great wisdom therein. They made also the first part of the book M, but in respect, that labour was too heavy and the unspeakable concourse of the sick hindered them. And also, whilst his new building, called Sancti Spiritus, was now finished, they concluded to draw and receive yet others more into their fraternity. To this end was chosen Brother R.C., his deceased father's brother's son. Brother B., a skilful painter, G.G. and P.D., the secretary, all Germans except I.A., so in all they were eight in number, all bachelors and of vowed virginity, by whom was collected a book or volume of all that which man can desire, wish, or hope for. Although we do now freely confess that the world is much amended within a hundred years, yet we are assured that our axiomata shall immovably remain unto the world's end, and also the world in her highest and last age shall not attain to see anything else, for our rota takes her beginning from the day when God spake fit, and shall end when he shall speak periat. Yet God's clock striketh every minute, where ours scarce striketh perfect hours. We also steadfastly believe that if our brethren and fathers had lived in this our present and clear light, they would have more roughly have handled the Pope, Muhammad, scribes, artists, and sophisters, and showed themselves more helpful, not simply with sighs and wishing of their end and consummation. When now these eight brethren had disposed and ordered all things in such manner, as there was not now need of any great labour, and also that everyone was sufficiently instructed and able perfectly to discourse of secret and manifest philosophy, they would not remain any longer, but... As in the beginning they had agreed, they separated themselves into several countries, because that not only the axiomata might in secret be more profoundly examined by the learned, but they themselves, if in some country or other they observed anything, or perceived some error, might inform one another of it. Their agreement was this. First, that none of them should profess any other thing than to cure the sick and that gratis. Second, none of the posterity should be constrained to wear any one certain kind of habit, but therein to follow the custom of the country. Third, for every year upon the day C, they should meet together at the house Sancti Spiritus to write the cause of his absence. Fourth, every brother should look about for a worthy person who, after his decease, might succeed him. Fifth, the word R.C. should be their seal, mark, and character. Sixth, the fraternity should remain secret 100 years. These six articles were bound themselves 
one to another to keep. Five of the brethren departed. Only the brethren B and D remained with the father, brother, R.C. a whole year. When these likewise departed, then remained by him his cousin and brother I.O., so that he have all the days of his life with him, two of his brethren. And although that as yet the church was not cleansed, nevertheless we know that they did think of her, and what with longing desire they looked for. Every year they assembled together with joy, and made a full resolution of that which they had done. There must certainly have been great pleasure to hear truly and without invention related and rehearsed all the wonders which God hath poured out here and there throughout the world. Every one may hold it out for certain that such persons as were sent and joined together by God and the heavens, and chosen out of the wisest of men as have lived in many ages, did live together above all others in highest unity, greatest secrecy and most kindness one towards another. After much, a most laudable sort they did spend their lives. But although they were free from all diseases and pain, yet, notwithstanding, they could not live and pass the time appointed of God. The first of his fraternity, which died, and that in England, was I.O., as Brother C. long before had foretold him. He was very expert and well-learned in Kabbalah, as his book called H. witnessed. In England, he is much spoken of and chiefly because he cured a young Earl of Norfolk of the leprosy. They had concluded that, as much as possible could be, the burial place should be kept secret, as at this day it is not known unto us what has become of some of them. Yet everyone's place was supplied with a fit successor. But this we will confess publicly by these presents, to the honour of God, that what secret soever we have learned out of the book M, although before our eyes we behold the image and pattern of all the world, yet are there not shown unto us our misfortunes, nor hour of death, for which only is known to God himself, who thereby could have us keep in a continual readiness, but hereof more in our confession, where we do set down 37 reasons wherefore we now do make known our fraternity and proffer such high mysteries freely without constraint and reward. Also, we do promise more gold than both the Indies bring to the King of Spain, for Europe is with child and will bring forth a strong child who shall stand in need of a great godfather's gift. After the death of I.O., Brother R.C. rested not, but as soon as he could, called the rest together, and then, as we suppose, his grave was made, although hitherto we, who were the latest, did not know when our loving father R.C. died, and had no more but the bare names of the beginners, and all the successors to us. Yet there came into our memory a secret, which through dark and hidden words and speeches of the hundred years, Brother A, the successor of D, who was of the last and second row of succession, had lived amongst many of us, did it impart unto us of the third row and succession. Otherwise, we must confess that after the death of the said A, none of us had in any manner known anything of Brother C R, and of his first fellow brethren, than that which was extant of them in our philosophical bibliotheca amongst which our axiomata was held for the chiefest rota mundi, for the most artificial, and profuse, for the most profitable. Likewise, we do not certainly know if these of the second row have been of like wisdom as the first, and if they were admitted to all things. It shall be declared hereafter to the gentle reader, not only that we have heard of the burial of brother R.C., but also it shall be made manifest publicly by the foresight, sufferance, and commandment of God, whom we most faithfully obey, that if we shall be answered discreetly and Christian-like, we will not be ashamed to set forth publicly in print our names and surnames, our meetings, or anything else that may be required at our hands. 
Now, the true and fundamental relation of the finding out of the high illuminated man of God, Father CRC, is this. After that A in Galia Narbonensi was deceased, there succeeded in his place our loving brother N.N. This man, after he had repaired unto us to take the solemn oath of fidelity and secrecy, informed us, bona fide, that A had comforted him in telling him that this fraternity should ere long not remain so hidden, but should be to all the whole German nation helpful, needful, and commendable, of the which he was not in any wise in his estate ashamed. For year following, after he had performed his school right, and was minded now to travel, being for that purpose sufficiently provided with Fortunatus's purse, he fought, he being a good architect, to alter something of his building, and to make it more fit. In such renewing, he lighted upon the memorial table, which was cast of brass, and containeth all the names of the brethren, with some few other things. This he would transfer into another more fitting vault, for where or when Brother Arcy died, or in that country he was buried, was by our predecessors concealed and unknown unto us. In this table stuck a great nail, somewhat strong, so that when it was with force drawn out, it took with it an indifferent big stone out of the thin wall or plastering of the hidden door, and so unlooked for uncovered the door, whereat we did with joy and longing throw down the rest of the wall and cleared the door, upon which was written in great letters, Post 70, Anos Patibo. With the year of the Lord under it, therefore we gave God thanks and let it rest that same night, because first we overlook our rota, but we refer ourselves again to the confession for what we here publish is done for the help of those who are worthy. But to the unworthy, God willing, it will be small profit. For like as our door was after so many years wonderfully discovered, also there shall be opened a door to Europe when the wall is removed, which already doth begin to appear, and with great desire is expected of many. In the morning following we opened the door, and there appeared to our sight a vault of seven sides and seven corners, every side five foot broad and the height of eight foot. Although the sun never shined in this vault, nevertheless it was enlightened with another sun, which had learned this from the sun and was situated in the upper part in the centre of the siding. In the midst, instead of a tombstone, was a round altar covered with a plate of brass, and thereon this engraven, A.C.R.C. Hoc Universi Compendium Unius Mihi Sepulchrum Feci. Round about the first circle or brim stood, Jesus Mihi Omnia. In the middle, there were four figures enclosed in circles, whose circumscription was, one, Nequaquam Vacuum, two, Legus Jugum, 3. Libertus Evangeliae, 4. Dei Gloria Intacta. This is all clear and bright, as also the seventh side and the two heptagons. So we kneeled down all together and gave thanks to the soul wise, soul mighty, and soul eternal God, who have taught us more than all men's wits would have found out. Praised be his glory name. This vault we parted in three parts, the upper part or siding, the wall or side, the ground or floor. Of the upper part, you shall understand no more at this time, but that it was divided according to the seven sides in the triangle, which was in the bright centre. But that therein is contained you, that are desirous of our society, shall, God willing, behold the same with your own eyes. Every side or wall is parted into ten squares, every one with their several figures and sentences, as they are truly showed and set forth in Concentratum, here in our book. The bottom again is parted in the triangle, but because therein is described the power and rule of the inferior governors, 
we leave to manifest the same, for fear of the abuse by the evil and ungodly world. But those that are provided and stored with the heavenly antidote do without fear or hurt tread on and bruise the head of the old and evil serpent, which this our age is well fitted for. Every side or wall had a door for a chest wherein there lay diverse things, especially all our books, which otherwise we had besides the vocabulario of Theophrastus Paracelsus of Hohenheim, and these which daily unfalsifieth we do participate. Herein we also we found his itinerarium and vita, whence his relation for the most part is taken. In another chest were looking glasses of diverse virtues, as also in other places were little bells, burning lamps, and chiefly wonderful artificial songs, generally all was done to that end. And if it should be happen after many hundreds of years, the fraternity should come to nothing, they might by this only vault be restored again. Now we had not yet seen the dead body of our careful and wise father. We therefore removed the altar aside, then we lifted up a strong plate of brass, and found a fair and worthy body, whole and unconsumed, as the same is here lively counterfeited, with all the ornaments and attires. In his hand he held a parchment called tea, for which next unto the Bible is our greatest treasure, which ought not to be delivered to the censure of the world. At the end of the book standeth the following elogium. Granum pectori Jesu in situm, sia si ex nobili atque splendida Germaniae arsi familia oriendus visui seculi divinis reveratanibus subtilissimus imaginationibus indefesis laboribus ad celestia atque humana mysteriae arcanave admissus posquam suam quam arabico et africano itineribus coleerut plus quam regum atque importarium gazam suo seculo nondum conveniantum posteriati eruandum custodiviciet et iam suarum artium ut et nominus fides ac conjunctissimus heredis insitiatus mundum minitum omnibus motibus magno illi respondetum fabricaset oque tandem preteritatum presentium et futurarum rerum compendio extracto centenario maio non morbo quem ipse nunquam corpore expertus erat nunquam alios infestare cinebat ulo pelente sed spiritus dei evocante illumantum animan interfratrum emplexus et ultima oscula fidelissimo creatore dio rediset pater delectissimus frater suavissimus precepto fidelissimus amicus integrimus asuis ad one twenty annos ic absconus est underneath they had subscribed themselves one father i a father c h Electiono fraternitas caput. 2. Father G. V. M. P. C. 3. Father F. R. C. Unia ores es spiritus. 4. Father F. B. M. P. A. Picto et architectus. 5. Father G. G. M. P. I. Cabalista. Secundi circuli. 1. Father P. A. Successor, Father I. O. Mathematicus. 2. Father A. Successor, Father P. D. 3. Father R. Successor, Patri Siasi, cum Christo Triumphantis. At the end was written, Ex Dio nascimur in Jesu morimur per Spiritum Sanctum reviscusmus. 
At that time was already dead brother I.O. and brother D. But the burial place, where is it to be found? We doubt not, but our father, Senor, have the same and some especial thing laid in earth and perhaps likewise hidden. We also hope that this our example will stir up others more diligently to inquire after their names, which we have therefore published, and to search for the place of their burial. For most part of them, by reason of their practice in physic, are yet known and praised among very old folks. So might perhaps our Gaza be enlarged, or at least be better cleared. Concerning Minutum Mundum, we found it kept in another little altar, truly more finer than can be imagined by any understanding man, but we will leave him undescribed until we shall be truly answered upon this our true heartened farmer. So, we have covered it again with the plates and set the altar thereon, shut the door and made it sure with all our seals. Moreover, by instruction and command of our rotor, there come to sight some books, among which is contained M, which were made instead of household care by the praiseworthy MP. Finally, we departed the one from the others and left the natural heirs in possession of our jewels. And so we do expect the answer and judgment of the learned and unlearned. Howbeit we know after a time there will now be a general reformation both of divine and humane things according to our desire and expectation of others. For it is fitting that before the rising of the sun there should appear and break forth aurora or some clearness or divine light in the sky. And so, in the meantime, some few which shall give their names may join together thereby to increase the number and respect of our fraternity and make a happy and wished for beginning of our philosophical canons prescribed to us by our brother R.C. and be partakers with us our treasures which never can fail or be wasted in all humility and love to be eased of this world's labours and not walk so blindly in the knowledge of the wonderful works of God. But that also every Christian may know of what religion and belief we are, we confess to have the knowledge of Jesus Christ, as the same now in these last days, and chiefly in Germany, most clear and pure is professed, and is now a days cleansed and void of all swerving people, heretics and false prophets. In certain and noted countries maintained, defended and propagated. Also, we use two sacraments, as they are instituted with all forms and ceremonies of the first and renewed church. In Politia, we acknowledge the Roman Empire and Quartum Monarchium for our Christian head, albeit we know what alterations be at hand and would fain impart the same with all our hearts to other godly learned men, notwithstanding our handwriting, which is in our hands. No man, except God alone, can make it common, nor any unworthy person is able to bereave us of it. But we shall help with secret aid this so good a cause, as God shall permit or hinder us. For our God is not blind, as the heathen's fortuna, but is the church's ornament and the honour of a temple. Our philosophy also is not a new invention, but as Adam, after his fall, have received it, and as Moses and Solomon used it. Also, it ought not much to be doubted of or contradicted by other opinions or meanings, but seeing the truth is peaceable, brief, and always like herself in all things, and especially according by with Jesus in omni parte, and all members, and as he is the true image of the Father, so is she his image. So it shall not be said. This is true according to philosophy, but true according to theology, and wherein Plato, Aristotle, Pythagoras, and others did hit the mark, and wherein Enoch, Abraham, Moses, Solomon did excel, but especially wherewith that wonderful book the Bible agreed. All the same concurred together, and makes a sphere or globe, whose total parts are equidescent from the centre, as hereof more at large and more plain shall be spoken of in Christianly conference.
in den Boeca de Slovens. But now concerning and chiefly in this our age, the ungodly and accursed gold making which have gotten so much the upper hand, whereby under colour of it many runagatis and roguish people do use great villainies, and cozen and abuse the credit which is given to them. Yea, nowadays men of discretion do hold the transmutation of metals to be the highest point of fastigium in philosophy. This is all their intent and desire, and that God would be most esteemed by them and honoured which could make great store of gold, for which with unpremeditated prayers they hope to obtain of the all-knowing God and searcher of all hearts. But we, by these presents, publicly testify that the true philosophers are far of another mind, esteeming little the making of gold, which is but a paragon, for besides that they make a thousand better things. We say with our loving father, CRC, Fi orium nisi quantum orum, for unto him the whole nature is detected. He doth not rejoice that he can make gold, and that, as saith Christ, the devils are obedient unto him, but is glad that he seeth the heavens open, the angels of God ascending and descending, and his name written in the book of life. Also, we do testify that, under the name of Chimia, many books and pictures are set forth in Contumelium Gloria Dei, as we will name them in their due season, and will give to the pure-hearted a catalogue or register of them. We pray all learned men to take heed of these kind of books, for the enemy never rests but soweth his weeds till a stronger one doth root them out. So according to the will and meaning of Father CRC, we, his brethren, request again all the learned in Europe who shall read, sent forth in five languages, this our farmer and confessio, that it would please them with good deliberation to ponder this our offer and to examine most nearly and sharply their arts and behold the present time with all diligence, and to declare their mind either communicato, concilio, or singulatum, by print. And although at this time we make no mention either of our names or meetings, yet nevertheless every one's opinion shall assuredly come to our hands, in what language soever it be. Nor anybody shall fail, whoso gives but his name to speak with some of us, either by word of mouth, or else, if there be some let in writing. And this we say for a truth, that whosoever shall honestly, and from his heart bear affection unto us, it shall be beneficial to him in goods, body, and soul. But he that is false-hearted, or only greedy of riches, the same first of all shall not be able in any manner of wise to hurt us, but bring himself to utter ruin and destruction. Also, our building, although 100,000 people had very near seen and beheld the same, shall forever remain untouched, undestroyed, and hidden to the wicked world. Sub umbra alarum tuarum Jehovah. This concludes our reading of the Pharma Fraternitatis. If you have enjoyed this, please hit like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any suggestions for future readings, please also let me know in the comments. Thank you and bye for now.